So Brandon Arnolds, he was uh, sharing his magic presentation on, on Reddit this week and um, uh, I watched it. It's uh, a little bit more than half an hour and a really great talk for anybody who wants to know more about magic uh, and uh, even if you have been using it for a while there might be some, uh, some things that you pick up. Uh, and one thing that uh, struck me was uh, when he started mentioning sub modules, because in Git we have these sub modules, and um, I haven't really worked that much with those. Uh, uh, but recently, when I when I set up my blog, I uh, I needed to have them myself. Uh, but at that time, I was just uh, finding some commands that I could run in the. Uh, in the terminal uh, to to update the sub modules and such or initialize them, uh, but he mentioned you can use magic, of course, and uh, so I started to use it this week, uh, and uh, that's really nice actually. So I um, thought I would just uh, demonstrate how uh, how I've been using it. Uh, so I thought first that I would um, grab my uh, my Emacs blog repository, and uh, I will uh, enable this uh, command log mode. Uh, so, magit blog. So, uh, here's my, uh, my content. Um, and I've enabled uh, uh, a hook here so I can actually see my, uh, my sub modules in the, in the magic status uh, view. That is not done by default. Um, and we can see here now that they are unpopulated. Because I haven't done anything with them, and um, depending on uh, like I think uh, I have some different uh, uh, some different keys than that Brandon had this in, in his talk, uh, but you can always bring up the the help uh, window and uh, and see for for sub modules I have the single quote. Uh, so if I press that, I'll see uh, all the things I can do here and. Obviously now when I'm starting off, I want to do this uh, populate and um, um, one benefit of, of having them here, I can actually show how, how you have those. Uh, start with this part. Um, so there is this magic add section hook and uh, and the magic status section hook and um, yeah I'm choosing to insert uh, modules you have some different uh, options here um, but that's how it looks like um, so first thing I want to do is populate them uh, I have two options either can can uh, can run in from here and then choose populate and I will um, get to choose um, one benefit of having them here in, in the managed status is to can, um, I can mark them like this and then run the, uh, the popular command and then we'll run them on both at the same time. All right, uh, so here I have them. I can press on one and I will go into to this one. Uh, public here is my... Um, blog content uh, which is uh, public with um, github pages and uh, the yeah, main role is the theme I use for the blog um, but I thought I would showcase like uh, 
what will happen as well if if I've um, um, made some changes uh, here and uh, have another computer where I haven't updated it, so I will get a merge conflict. So let's go to this public, uh, and I will uh, rewind. Uh, Um, yeah, I will rewind this one, uh, maybe to here, so I will press B twice, and check out that one, and then I will take a file, like the uh, index, um, index here, um, and then I will just uh, delete all the content. Um, so now I have this uh, on stage here, I'll stage it, and uh, Alright, right, so now I have this, that one change. Uh, I can switch buffer here to, uh, to the blog manager here. I can do a refresh and um, now I have this one unstaged. So some project um, hash here has changed. Um, and now um, I want to make sure I, I, I update these. Uh, so I'll mark them. And run the update command, the U here. Um, you can also note that I've enabled some switches, uh, like the recursive rebase onto tip and use upstream tip. Um, if you want to change the default setting in uh, Imagit, you just uh, uh, yeah, make the changes here for the switches and uh, press Ctrl T. And that will. Um, make these uh, default uh, if you follow up uh, with a control x control s to save them but now i've already done this part so I'll press u for update it asked me if i want to update both of them yeah yeah so we can see here now at the bottom i have some unresolved conflicts in public uh, also, if I press the dollar sign here, uh, I can go to the bottom here and I will say unab unable to rebase in submodule path public. So if I press public here, uh, I am now in a rebase. And I can go here and press E for, for EDIF. Uh, I will momentarily turn off that one because it's it's a little bit off the screen here. So uh, in EDIF, N and P uh, navigates between next and previous conflict. Um, I only have one here because I removed all the content. Um, and I'll press A um, to, to choose the change from A. And then Q for quit. And yes, and it was resolved. Um, now there has been uh, no new line at the end of file. There's been some change here. So I'll press uh, R for rebase and rebase continue. And uh, yeah, I now I have my, uh, my change on top of the recent master. Um, if I go back to the public, go to the blog here. Um, the difference is resolved, but I also have uh, um, I'll state changes because uh, I made some changes here to public. Um, although uh, that is, uh, yeah, I don't know. Do I want these changes? I, mean, I can examine them. Don't really know the difference here. Is it better? Uh, um, then to to undo. Uh, to undo this part, I can actually like just do a magic reset card, and 
and uh, now I have my point on the master or G master line here. So when I press enter, um, it just kills that change. Uh, if you go back and update, it's gone. Yeah, so that's uh, that's a little bit how you can uh, work with some modules.